The buttons in this show have been disabled for the purpose of the video. This is a discussion of the fine touch pathway concerning this discriminative touch sensibility, conscious proprioception, and, and vibratory sense. The show will be divided into two parts, that showing the dealing with the fine touch pathway from the body and that from the head region. This is a cartoon of an overview of the fine touch pathway from the body. This pathway deals and records uh, two-point discrimination and position and movement sensibility and, and vibratory sense. As you can see, it's a three neuron pathway. The uh, neuron one does ascend the posterior funiculus and the caudal medulla It's going to decus, neuron two is going to decussate and then continue to ascend up to the diencephalon region. And then from that point, it projects to the postcentral gyrus. Starting with the tour of the fine touch pathway, we take fine touch information from the lower limb. We see the cell body of this neuron one in the pathway is located in the dorsal root ganglion at this level. We'll note that all the neuron one cell bodies in this pathway uh, from the body is, are located in dorsal root ganglia. The central process enters the spinal cord through the uh, dorsal root and immediately becomes part of the posterior funiculus at this level, which is uh, at this level is, is the fasciculus gracilis. And note that these fibers are going to be somatotopically organized in that parts of the parts of the body can be represented in this uh, posterior funiculus and we'll follow this as we go rostrally. Here we see the lower limb is most medially positioned and lower trunk a little bit lateral to that. Now we're going to get fine touch information from the upper trunk. This is a T2 level of the thoracic spinal cord. This neuron one cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion again and the central process enters through the spinal cord through the dorsal root and in, into the posterior funiculus. But at this point, the posterior funiculus is divided into two parts, fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus. This process from the upper trunk becomes part of the fasciculus uh, cuneatus. As noted previously, these fibers are going to be somatotopically, somatotopically organized so that the lower limb is going to be most immediately represented in the posterior funiculus and then progressively we go to lower trunk and now we have upper trunk represented. At the cervical enlargement region of the spinal cord, we're going to see, we're getting fine touch information from the upper limb. Our cell body of neuron one in the dorsal root ganglion enters the spinal cord by way of the dorsal root. And like that from the upper trunk becomes part of the fasciculus cuneatus and ascends. The somatotopic organization continues so that the upper limb is now represented the most laterally in, in the group of fibers in the posterior funiculus. funiculus. Here in the caudal medulla, the axons of neuron one in the fine touch pathway will terminate upon cell bodies of neuron two in their respective nuclei that is the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. The, so these cell bodies are, or, are organized in a similar way in a somatotopic fashion, with the lower limb nor, uh, cell bodies being more medial and the upper limb more lateral. Axons of neuron two will project ventrally in, in what is known as the internal arcuate fibers, and then will decussate and the decussation of the medial lumiscus. Upon entering the contralateral medial lumiscus, they will continue to ascend through the brainstem. Here in the rostral medulla, we continue to see these uh, neuron two axons ascending in the medial lumiscus. And these fibers are organized in somatotopic fashion so that the upper limb is 
fibers are, are most post or most uh, dorsal in the medial lomiscus and in lower limb most ventrally positioned. In the pons, axons of neuron two continue to ascend through the medial lomiscus, which now has rotated about 90 degrees. Somatotopy is still maintained with the upper limb being most medially represented and the lower limb laterally represented in the medial lomiscus. In the midbrain region, the medial lomiscus continues its rotation at under 90 degrees. So now the axons of neuron 2 are, are ori oriented in the fashion that somatotopically the upper limb is now more ventrally positioned to the lower limb, which is of, co of course dorsally positioned. In this kernel section of the brain, we can follow the continuation of the axons of neuron 2 in the fine touch pathway. Here they will terminate upon a nucleus of the thalamus known as the ventral posterior lateral nucleus. And these will terminate on the cell bodies of neuron 3 within that nucleus. Axons of neuron 3 will project to the cerebral cortex by way of the posterior limb of the internal capsule and the coronary radiata. They end upon neurons or cell bodies in the postcentral gyrus, and they do so in a som somatotopic manner, so that the upper limb is most laterally represented by those fibers, and the lower limb are found most medially in those fibers. Uh, in fact, the lower limb does extend onto the medial surface of the hemisphere. The fine touch information that is received by the neurons in the postcentral gyrus is basically raw data, and that information has to be analyzed further so that one can is able to describe the uh, size, shape, or texture of an object, and this is known as stereognosis, or they may further, based on that information, be able to identify an object, and this is known as uh, tactile gnosis. This basically takes place a little bit more posterior, adjacent to the postcentral gyrus, in areas uh, five and seven, where this analysis takes place and analysis to have stereognosis and tactile gnosis. This is a summary of the fine touch pathway from the uh, body, and it's showing various components. Remember, it's a three neuron pathway. And it, that is illustrated here and uh, gives you the uh, synopsis of that uh, information that we just uh, covered in this portion of the slideshow. This is an overview of the fine touch pathway involving the head region. It is a three neuron pathway also uh, with the uh, trigeminal nerve being the primary cranial nerve that is involved in transmitting this information. Uh, the cell body of neuron 1 is found in the semilunar ganglion. Neuron 2, there's a central nucleus at, at the pontine levels, as we will see, and cell body uh, acts on neuron 2 ascends to terminate in the um, thalamus. And neuron uh, three then projects from the thalamus to the postcentral gyrus. The three divisions of the trigeminal nerve are responsible for receiving fine touch information from an area that covers uh, all external and internal surfaces anterior to a coronal plane that passes anterior to the ear. The cell body of uh, neuron one that conducts the discriminative touch and vibratory senses uh, of this pathway are found in the semilunar ganglion. The central process of this neuron one terminates upon a nucleus 
in the rostral pons known as the principal sensory nucleus of five. And it termi terminates upon the second neuron in this. Neuron two axon decussates at the level of the rostral pons and enters a tract known as the ventral trigeminothalamic tract and projects superiorly. The neuron one for the proprioception from such areas as the muscles of mastication uh, is a little different in that it's in a separate nucleus at the in the rostral uh, pons, and, which is the mesencephalic nucleus of five. This is a unipolar neuron, and so it's, a, it's, it's it is your neuron one. Its axon is going to uh, project or run with neuron two of the uh, for fine touch. A note regarding this pathway is that some of the fine touch information and probably some proprioceptive information will ascend the ipsilateral ventral trigeminal thalamic tract. So that if there were a unilateral lesion of the a tract, the ventral trigeminal thalamic tract, it probably would not result in loss of total uh, touch, fine touch sensibility or proprioceptive sensibility on the uh, uh, contralateral side. So we can see here there's the ventral trigeminal tract carrying fine touch sensibility, in need of uh, discriminative touch and uh, vibratory sense, and axons of neuron two are passing through that. Uh, it is this tract is very close to the medial meniscus, and also this other tract known as the anterior lateral system. So if there were a lesion in this area, usually all three of those would be impacted. We have to think about that for later discussions uh, involving multiple pathways uh, as far as lesions are concerned. Uh, I have not shown the uh, conscious proprioceptive pathway here for the uh, coming from the head region. Um, just to make it a little simpler, but just remember that if they were here, these would be axons of neuron one. That is the reason for that is that the proprioceptive pathway from the head region, the neuron one cell body, is not in the seminal intercanglion. It is found in the, in the, cent, the central nucleus, the mesencephalic nucleus of five. So uh, basically, that's a two neuron pathway to get information to conscious levels. In the diencephalon, uh, neuron two axons in the fine touch pathway from the head are going to be synapsing on a nucleus in the thalamus, known as the ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus. And these are the uh, where, the, where we have the uh, cell bodies of neuron three, three in this pathway. Neuron three axons project through the uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule and then uh, the corona radiata to reach the most lateral portion of the uh, gray matter of the postcentral gyrus, where the region for uh, the head is represented. And we can see that here also in our little stick figure. And here in the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere, we can see the uh, representation of the head uh, and on the put in the postcentral gyrus for the fine touch and proprioceptive and vibratory senses sensibility. So here we have a synopsis of the components in the fine touch pathway from the head. Um, it's a three neuron pathway as noted, and we see the various components that we see that are part of that overall, overall pathway. Uh, for reasons of simplicity, the uh, proprioceptive portion of this uh, pathway, pathway is not illustrated. The following lesions will only be dealing with the line touch pathway, even though they may impact other sensory or motor pathways.
listed below are a list of terms that are often associated with deficits of the fine touch pathway. Pumptane anesthesia, or the loss of two-point discrimination sensibility. Kin anesthesia, the inability to describe, to describe the position and um, location and movement of a body part. Asteriognosis, the inability to describe the size, shape, and texture of an object. And through that, tactile agnosis, the inability to actually describe the object just by touch. And then the positive Romberg sign, which a person will uh, show noticeable swaying when standing with their feet close together and their eyes closed. And in looking at the fine touch pathway, we have a general rule that can be expressed that if the lesion is um, uh, caudal to the decussation of the medial lineniscus, that the deficits will be ipsilateral to the lesion. And if it's superior to that decussation, the deficits are contralateral to the lesion. This lesion involves the dorsal root of a spinal nerve. As you know, all sensory information coming into the spinal cord travels through that dorsal root, and the cell body of these uh, axons uh, or neurons uh, are found in the dorsal root ganglion. This particular uh, level is C5. Hopefully you'll be able to recognize that. And for this lesion, there's a range that the lesion extends is C5 through T1. So we're dealing with primary sensory neurons of the fine touch pathway uh, coming in from dermatomes from C5 to T1. As you know, that represents this brachial plexus and certainly involves the upper limb, sensory information from the upper limb and since we're dealing with the fine touch pathway, that uh, would, we would expect to have deficits in the upper limb associated with the fine touch pathway. So the lesion involving uh, the dorsal roots of C5 to T1, uh, the localization in our patient where the deficits would be found would be on the ipsilateral side, the left side of the body, and uh, because it's from the upper limb, it'd be in the upper limb region, of course, uh, as illustrated here. The deficits are those that were uh, listed with the fine touch pathway deficits. What is not listed here is the positive Romberg sign, because that is only if the lower limb were involved, where you would see a, a positive Romberg sign. So here we have a spinal cord segment. Uh, and what segment is that? What level of the spinal cord is this? So you see robust ventral gray horns. The posterior funiculus is not subdivided. So it has to be below T6. Um, being that it's enlarged ventral gray horns, it's in the lumbar level. And here we see is L4. So where is the lesion? The lesion is in the posterior funiculus. At this level, it's not subdivided. So the, all axons that are ascending through here will be cutting off fine touch pathway fibers that are ascending. Below Everything below L4 will demonstrate deficits related to the fine touch pathway. So in our patient, uh, what would the deficits be? Of course, they would be those associated with the fine touch pathway. And, and in this case, because information is being transmitted from the lower limb, we expect to see a positive Romberg sign in this patient. Where would the deficits be? Uh, because we're below the decussation of this pathway, uh, it'd be on the ipsilateral side of the lesion. And the lesion does in involve uh, ascending fibers that are tra being transmitted from the lower limb region and as illustrated here on the left side is the is or where we see the deficits
So here we have a spinal cord level. And what level is that? Well, first of all, there's a robust ventral gray horn. The posterior funiculus is subdivided. There's a lot of white matter. This would should lead you to believe, uh, think of a cervical level, I and mean, this is C5. So where is the lesion? So here's our lesion site, and where would that be? What is that area identified as? Well, it is the left fasciculus cuneus. So what and where are the deficits? Well, the deficits are involving fine touch pathway fibers ascending in the fasciculus cuneatus on the left side. Fasciculus cuneatus is present between T6 and C1. The lesion at this level is C5. So from C5 to T6, anything coming into the spinal cord at those levels has been cut off. It cannot reach a level that's going to reach, eventually reach the cerebral cortex. So that would be the region where we see the um, fine touch weight de pathway deficits, which would include the list that we have here. Where would the deficit be? Since it's the lesions below the level of the decussation of this pathway in the caudal medulla, and it's on the left side, the lesion site will be on the left side of the body, or ipsilateral side of the lesion, in other words. And it would be involved dermatomes C5 to T6 in that range because of the fibers that are ascending in the fasciculus cuneatus at this level. So it would be on the left side of the body, include the upper trunk and the left limb would demonstrate these deficits. Uh, in this patient, is just, what is demonstrated is a condition called Tabes dorsalis, in which uh, multiple uh, dorsal roots are impacted uh, in a caudal level. Uh, as, and this is one of the findings that uh, that occur uh, in the late stages of syphilis. Uh, and here we see a demyelination of those axons uh, carrying fine touch information, uh, and and it is uh, isolated to the fasciculus gracilis because they're the, they're the, in particular are the uh, dorsal roots that are involved in the uh, below T6 level. So here we have a brainstem level, and what level is that? We see two prominent features more ventrally, the uh, inferior olivary nuclei. Dorsally, we see a, a open area, which is the fourth ventricle. And those two features should lead you to, to identify it as being the open medulla, or rostral medullary level. And here we have a lesion, and that is in enclosing or involving some of the part, major part of the fine touch pathway. And what would that structure be? Well, it'd be the medial meniscus, which is found on each side between the two olivary nucleus, nuclei. <clears throat> the uh, deficits associated with that would be those, of course, with the fine, related to the fine touch pathway as listed here. And where would the lesion be? Well, we'll find out. So where would the deficits be distributed on the body because of this lesion of the medial meniscus and the open medulla? It's lesions on the left side or above the decussation of the medial meniscus. These are axons of neuron two in the pathway from the body and so the lesion should be on the contralateral side of the body, which would be the right side, and pretty much cover the whole body.
as we see here. And this is uh, sometimes called the medial medullary syndrome. It's often uh, related to a vascular infarct uh, of the uh, blood vessels that supply this area. So we have another brainstem level. What level is this? The key features are presence of two prominent bundles of white matter dorsal eventually, and they are the cruse cerebri and uh, some gray matter adjacent to it, which is substantia nigra, and then a, a small opening dorsally, which is the cerebral aqueduct. That would put it in the midbrain level. And then uh, is it rostral or caudal? Well, there's a sign of a red nucleus or nuclei here, and also fibers of the third cranial nerve indicated. That should put it be in, the, in the rostral midbrain level. What structures are involved in this uh, lesion that we see here um, of the fine touch pathway? Well, uh, the medial lumiscus is certainly in this area of the lesion, as well as the ventral trigeminal thalamic tract. What would the deficits be? Well, they'd be the ones we've listed before uh, associated with a fine touch pathway lesion. Where would that be? Well, let's look at the next slide for that. The lesion is on the right left side of the body, and this is above the decussation of the medial lumiscus. So the deficits should be on the right side of the body, that is contralateral side because of that. And uh, it would involve all the body on the right side and also the head region. And if you see the head is not we don't have any partial loss because uh, the fine touch pathway fibers from the head will um, uh, both ascend contralaterally as well as some will ascend ipsilaterally. So there's not complete loss on the, on the uh, right side. So what fine touch pathway structure is found in this lesion on the medial surface of the right cerebral hemisphere? Uh, this is an area uh, where the, we have an extension of the primary motor and sensory cortices onto the surface, and this region is known as the paracentral lobule. This area is supplied by one of the cerebral arteries, indicated by the arrow, and that's the anterior cerebral artery. And the deficits that we see here uh, would be those related, of course, with the fine touch pathway. And a little clue as to where the lesion may be is that we have, I've also have listed here the positive Romberg sign. Uh, so that may be a clue where the, where the deficits are. So we'll look at the next slide. So with the lesion on the medial surface of the right cerebral hemisphere in the paracentral lobule area, uh, we would expect to see the deficits on the contralateral side, the left side, and the part of the body involved would be lower limbs, since this is the region of the, of the hemisphere that the lower limb is re represented here. So that's where we see our deficits. Some of the lower trunk is involved, and a little further discussion is also presented here. So first of all, we want to identify this brainstem level. Uh, looking at the features, we see what appears to be a fourth ventricle. Uh, eventually, we see a highly compacted uh, area of uh, white matter surrounded by some gray matter. They are the corticospinal tracts, corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts surrounded by pontine nuclei. These are typical features we see in the caudal ponds. Uh, and then the lesion we want to look, look at, uh, what uh, fine touch pathway structure would be, uh, could be involved in this lesion. <clears throat> Well, it's the medial lumiscus. And we know the fibers are somatotopically organized, so it seems to be cutting through the more medial part of that medial lumiscus, which involve the uh, up 
uh, upper limb and trunk region of the body? And what and where are the deficits? Well, the deficit would be on the contralateral side because we're above the decussation of the medial meniscus. So it's a right sided lesion. We should see deficits on the left side, and they would be those listed here. So the deficits will be on the left side of the body and the uh, upper trunk and uh, upper limb on the left side due to this lesion. So we have a lesion here in, uh, that indicated in this horizontal section of the brain. Uh, what structures uh, related to the fine touch pathway would be enclosed within this lesion site? Well, they would be the thalamus, where we have the ventral posterior lateral and medial nuclei that are involved in the fine touch pathway from the body and the head, respectively and the posterior limb, the internal capsule. They are both components that carry uh, fibers of the fine touch pathway through the cerebral cortices. What and where are the deficits? Well, all the associated uh, deficits related to the fine touch pathway are listed here. Uh, and where would be? Well, the lesion's on the right side, so immediately you should think of it should be a left-sided deficits because we're above the decussation of this pathway. And since it involves areas that would be information coming from the body on the left side and the head region on the left side, uh, those would be the areas that would be impacted. So as indicated, uh, since the lesion is on the right side involving the thalamus and posterior limb and the internal capsule, the deficits uh, will be on the left side. It will, should involve the entire body on that side and the head region. The head region is not complete because of the fact that uh, these touch fibers from the head do project bilaterally and so uh, to the cortices, and so you wouldn't have complete loss of fine touch sensibility. And here's a little further discussion of this if you wish to read that. Uh, take your time and do that.